guys so this is my behind the scenes how I create the planner I was going to do a lot of back and forth with different screens but I think it's easier if I just lay this out for you at least that's how my brain works I really like to think linearly and I like clear cut directions so if you would want uh, or if you would like a copy of today's slides check the link in the description they are waiting right there for you so I'm going to go through three basic steps my creative process I just have 10 steps I follow for every single planner workbook no matter what I create it all goes through the same uh, sort of steps and then number two I'm going to apply it to a real life example which is the mental wellness planner so excited to share that with you guys that is launching tomorrow it is a pop-up shop and it was totally just an extra planner so you're still getting for June the Christian planner but this one was voted on last month it came in second and so you chose it so um, I just had some extra time so I went ahead and did it uh, so and then number three how can you actually get the mental wellness planner I will show that uh, share that with you at the end all right so here's my 10 step process I'm going to zoom through this really quickly because it'll be much more uh, useful to go through it with an example but basically first I choose a theme I decide if I'm doing a dated versus non-dated you know whatever type of planner it is I create the mood board because that pretty much solves all of my branding issues Third, I have quotes because I find those very inspirational and help to motivate me and set the tone for the rest of the planner. And then number four, then I finally do some research and I look at what else is out there. Number five is I put together a table of contents of what's going to be inside. And then number six, I determine if I want it to be horizontal, vertical, some sort of hybrid. And then I move on to number seven, which is putting together the wireframe and sort of what's going to go on each page, what goes on page two versus page three versus page four, et cetera. And then number eight for content creation, I have a set of guidelines as I'm creating this on things that are definitely in there and things that are definitely not in there. And so, for example, when I was creating the fitness planner, I knew that I dislike negative uh, reinforcement, like, you know, something really derogatory or insulting to somebody. And I know that some people love that kind of boot camp style where someone is yelling and screaming at you. That is not me or my brand or honestly anything that I like. So I knew that those were a definite no. And what I do like is a positive message, an uplifting message, something that tells women that it is okay to be right where they are and get started. You don't need to be like baseline anything. You don't need to feel bad about where you're at. Uh, so, you know, those for me were, when I say yes, no items for number eight, that is basically, I just look for guidelines and that's how I start creating content. Number nine is last, and that is the photos and illustrations, because once everything is kind of done, then I know what photos will sort of match the mood and feeling that I am trying to convey for that particular page. And of course, number 10 is proofread where I print everything out. So your process obviously will vary, but if you're just not sure what to do, this is my process. So let's go ahead and go through the mental wellness planner. So for this one, for step one, it was pretty easy. I knew it was going to be a planner with a purpose because that's what you chose. Now, I wanted just to make a note about number three, which is client avatars. I used to love them. And so I just want to tell everybody now I no longer love them and I find them kind of useless and a waste of time. So the reason why is because someone who wants to lose weight, right? Whether you are a mom or you are a CEO or you are just a home, I should say just, that was rude. <laughs> if you're a homemaker or if you are a uh, football coach or a cheerleading coach, I don't know. Doesn't matter what your role is. Most people have a million different roles, right? You're a mom, you're a sister, you are an accountant, you are also someone with a side business because you like quilting, right? So to me, People today are so multifaceted to kind of box people into a client avatar and then try to sell to them seems a little silly to me. So that is why I just want to make a note that client avatars, if you have ever heard me say do it, I am now changing my philosophy that don't do it. I don't think it's useful. So number two, the mood board is really a great way for me to determine how the look and feel of this is going to be. And for mental wellness, I really wanted some soft colors. I didn't want pastel because that kind of looks, um, you know, more like a younger kid or Easter, but I wanted something that was 
soft and relaxing. And these colors to me were very calming. Uh, and that's why I put all of these together. Um, and then number three, I have a bunch of quotes. So this one is the more you celebrate life, the more in life, the more there is in life to celebrate. And so I had then found a picture for this. Obviously, this is one of the social media uh, bonuses that you get with the mental wellness planner, but there's no secret. My secret is that I simply just Google quotes and I have Pinterest where I just keep collecting different quotes that I've liked throughout the years and I just bucket them together so I can refer to them later. Number four is research. So I just take a look at what else is out there. At the very top, I had done a video earlier on different anxiety and worry journals and planners. And then I looked at the Rising Tide had come out with both the self-care, and I believe last month they came out with a mental wellness planner themselves. Um, and then the other one is from the Happiness Planner for Resilience. And it's just nice to see what else is, what else people are doing out there. Next, I came up with a table of contents. So this really helps me narrow it down because there are so many things you could talk about with mental wellness, but these were the five major areas that I felt I wanted to uh, go over. And also, I definitely knew that, you know, I didn't, there were certain things I didn't want to go through. So I wanted this to be more of what's called a conquer guide. And so that's why I gave this planner the tagline, Sunshine for the Mind, because again, I just wanted it to be uplifting and hopeful and something that, you know, helped you feel better about yourself and about life and your situation. So next is the layout. Now I always choose vertical and that's because it is easy for you to sell as a printable because uh, I'm not making these, you are. And I also, it's easy to create into a two page digital planner. And for me, I really prefer the two page digital planner. I'm not a big fan of the one page one or the horizontal layout. And that's really my personal preference. I could do horizontal maybe in 2021. Maybe, <laughs> but uh, that's like so far away, who knows? Um, and the next thing for structure is creating the framework, uh, the wireframe. So this is always easier for me to do by hand. Uh, it's faster, it's easier. And plus if I try to do it on a computer, it's almost like I try to be a perfectionist. I end up procrastinating. I don't put these together. Uh, and then if I'm worried about like, is this the right thing to put on a page or something? I actually just send my friends a ton of emails and questions and text messages. Um, I also have a business mentor who I pay that I also spam with all of these things before I actually get there. So that's why I say the napkin strategy is always best. Um, this is what mine actually looks like. So these are all of my notes sitting on my desk. It's a mess. I mean, at the bottom there, that pink stuff on the bottom right, I think that is, or the purple, I think that's nail polish I had laying out. So when I say nail, like this is truly, I just write some some ideas and thoughts down. Now next for content creation, this is where I finally open Adobe InDesign and I do everything inside of there. But at this point, I pretty much have 80% of the content done. Um, and then, like I said, I have a what's in and what's out, like the guidelines for a yes and no. So for the mental wellness, I knew I wanted it to be positive, uplifting, and hopeful. And some of the things I saw in other journals, I knew I definitely didn't want. I didn't want to do root cause analysis, which a lot of psychotherapy drugs or psychotherapists use, or those kind of books written by PhDs. Um, I didn't want anything resembling uh, psychotherapy, psychiatry. I didn't want to talk at all about drugs. And I 100% did not want trackers. So to me, the more you think about something, the more you obsess about it. And it just seemed crazy to me that some of the trackers would track your depression, track your anxiety. And I'm not saying there's not value in that, but to me, all of a sudden, it's like I, I'm just carrying around this book where I'm just recording to, to paper and pen like all of the bad thoughts and bad feelings. And that was really the opposite to me of what I wanted to put out there and the content that I thought would be helpful to people. And so that this is basically my in and out um list. So number nine, I finally look for some images. I 100% use Adobe stock. Now these photos, ironically, for the blog post bonus were from Pixie stock. And those that's because we I don't give you the template for this. I just give you this as a PDF as a bonus for ideas. Now, the reason I used Adobe stock is because it is searchable. 
Um, and it is searchable by Adobe Stock ID and, you know, everyone can get access to it. And quite honestly, you know, I'm using Adobe InDesign, so it makes more sense to just stay within that same uh, brand. And then next, I proofread everything. So I print it out single-sided, three-hole punch it, put it in a binder, go through it with a red pen. Um, and I, I hope you know that the Adobe InDesign spell check is just atrocious. <laughs> like, I love that tool, but for spell check, it is uh, not your friend. It's not useful. It's not like Microsoft Word. It's not, that's really not what it's meant for. Um, it's meant more for word layout. It's not really meant to catch things. So if you have something really text heavy, I would write it in Microsoft Word and spell check it there. All right, so what to do next if you would love a copy of the Mental Wellness Planner coming out tomorrow is first thing, download today's slides. The next thing is RSVP for tomorrow's launch. Uh, there's a link in the description below. And I hope to see you tomorrow for launch day.